to the Freedom Factory's Creativity Unleashed podcast. Join me, Tiffany McIsaac, and my partner in creative pursuits, Melanie Pinto, as we explore creativity as a state of mind rather than a talent we're born with. Here you'll find guided meditations, insightful conversations, and evocative tools to help you unleash your full potential. Because when we live life from a place of creative thinking, the opportunities are endless. It's pretty hard to walk down the streets of Toronto without seeing a Birdo mural somewhere along your journey. I am especially grateful now during our current climate for all of the incredible street art that he creates, and I'm so excited to introduce visual artist Birdo to the podcast today. Tune in as he talks about how he got his start and built a name for himself, where the inspiration behind such mystical work comes from, and his advice on how emerging artists can set themselves apart in a sea full of talented creatives. Enjoy the podcast, and if you like it, please show us some love and hit subscribe. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on Creativity Unleashed. How's it going? Good. The, uh, in Canada, we have a wonderful holiday Monday. Yes. Uh, to, to extend our, uh, what, eight-week, six-week uh, time off period. Yeah. <laughs> to, to punctuate the uh, extended time off. <laughs> It's funny. It's like canceled yet at the same time, like everyone's off enjoying it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so if uh, I, I live and I'm currently working uh, from home and I'm by Trinity Bellwoods. So anyone that's in any of your viewers that are not from Toronto, it's my favorite park in the city. And there's always this moment every year in Toronto when, you know, there's a, a semblance of spring and this particular park, you know, just from one day to the next, all of a sudden looks like Woodstock. So yeah. for, I think it was Friday. There was like a really gorgeous day. I took the dogs for a walk and it was just like blankets and tambourines everywhere. It was yeah. amazing. Are they having any of the, um, <clears throat> like those tightrope lines yet? The slack lines are out. Yeah. yeah. That's another sign. Yeah. Yeah. They're, the, the slack liners are, are definitely like, um, they just go to it they're not waiting for anybody yeah. so yeah <laughs> i remember one year a friend had he's like i'm just gonna have my birthday party in trinity bellwoods just show up and it was like the best picnic the, there was like the slack lines people were just playing music it was so much better than being at a bar or something like that oh a million percent i'm, I'm not uh exaggerating exaggerating when i say woodstock like it's a <laughs> gathering of thousands of people in their 20s and 30s yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I feel like anywhere you go pretty much in the city, especially, I also live near Bellwoods. Um, I'm like near the Drake Queen West. Um, so especially in my neighborhood, but everywhere you go, um, back alley, you turn down, I'm a member at float Toronto. I see your work in there, Uh, Uh, the darling mansion, kind of like everywhere in this neighborhood and throughout the city, I see your work, um, And I feel like, especially now during this pandemic, when galleries are closed and people don't have access to go and see art the way that they could um, two months ago, walking the back alleys and like going and finding your murals and street art in general has been like such a savior as far as finding creative inspiration and just being inspired um, by the work that people are putting out there. And uh, I can't believe how much there is of your work. Um, around because I've been doing like extra back alley garage uh, door searching lately and it's like holy crap it's everywhere but how does it feel to be able to be giving people that experience especially right now when they can't go to galleries the way that they did two months ago um yeah that was a really uh, nice thing you said it, it um it feels good um I think for myself and and a few of my peers maybe I can speak for like First and foremost, I think we've been painting. I, I, I think sometimes I forget that I'm in the public realm, to be honest. And it's I'm just doing what I'm driven to do. 
and passionate to do. And, 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 uh, I mean, I guess to, to quote the, uh, you know, uh, 20th century genius puff daddy, but can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> um, so it's, so, so just, just to hear that people appreciate or enjoy or are inspired by is, is that's, that's, uh, icing on the cake. Um, and, and you're right at a time like this, like, I see Torontonians, like I see so many joggers right now and, and a lot of people taking walks. And so, um, we, we, we have to delight in, in things, uh, gone are our creature comforts, uh, for now. And so it, it is great. And I, I've seen a lot of my peers online have been doing very COVID specific activations, thanking frontline workers and, and, um, uh, sort of leaving messages of hope. So, definitely <clears throat> artwork in the public realm is, 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 uh, it's a fantastic thing. And it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a good time to take it in for sure. Keep stimulated and keep inspired. Mm -hmm. So we think that creativity is a state of mind, not a talent that you're born with. Um, but like what goes on in your mind <laughs> when you are creating such like colorful surrealist work? Oh, I, I, I agree with, with, uh, what you just said um it is a state of mind and and we had a, a bit of a preamble before we started recording like where my mind is wandering now is in multimedia mm -hmm. and so i always have these conversations with with my wife where you know i'm a i'm a visual artist i've been painting um in the public realm but i want to make a film you know uh, produce a song like even Salvador Dali, like he, you know, he collaborated with Disney. He he made short films. You think of Andy Warhol and all the crazy different things he did. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, <laughs> what goes on in the mind? Um, it's, uh, it's like a hamster in a wheel, I guess. Um, just just constantly spinning. But I always for 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 when I'm painting, especially in the exterior, it's it's I love to sort of get my outlines up. And, and then know that I'm happy with proportion or I feel like everything is where it's supposed to be. And I pop my headphones in and, and it's just party time. So it's honestly like, it's easy to get up in the morning and go when, when you just love what you do so much. So it, it really is just, uh, you know, the state of mind is, is just, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be doing what I love. So Sometimes I've heard that there's a, there's a, a bit of a, an unbalance because in the creative fields, you, you kind of feel like you have to continue to work so hard to be able to do what you love. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, it's it, painting because it's become work is constantly on my mind. And I think any expert would say that having work on your mind is, is probably not healthy all of the time. So I, I'm, I'm trying to navigate that balance. I think. Mm -hmm. I feel like your work is, um, I mean, your skills are super unique and highly memorable. And like you said, um, you know, you have aspirations to record a song and do film, but like currently you do work on canvas, um, sculpture, murals obviously um digital so like what sparks the inspiration for the different mediums that you work with currently oh that's a good question i whew, i think it's honestly just my peers i i think right now is is just such a fantastic time to be alive as a creative um i was having this conversation yesterday where we we, we just with social media social media can can be a blight um, for sure. But man, in terms of a mode of inspiration, like anything you can dream of is a possibility now. And anybody has access to that, that realm of possibility. So I'm just seeing things that impress me every hour of every day, every second of every day. So it's, it's, I think this open realm of, of infinite possibilities in, in the creative uh, stance is, is, kind of what leads the is the is the carrot in front of the the horse for me where I just I see something so amazing I'm like wow 
I've never done that before. Am I qualified to do it? Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't really matter <laughs> if I see yeah. something that's, that's, that excites me. I'm like, I got to figure out how to do that. So it, it really, I think to answer your question, like it, I'm, I'm a very curious individual and uh, actually a very competitive individual. So it's, it's, I see things that are, that, that puzzle me and I, I want to know if I can figure them out. So it's, you know, what I'm probably currently working on, like the sculptural realm was pretty new to me this year and last year. Um, and so as I'm, looking to evolve that um in the physical I, i'm already in my mind looking at other crazy things uh for for two years down the road so it's i would say it's just just a constant curiosity that that uh, fuels that do you remember the first time that you realized that you could create anything that you can imagine oh that's a that's a good question um you know I'm going to answer this way. Like I was, I worked in advertising. A lot of people know that. And I think, you know, there's, there's always this, this debate about creativity and and the field of the arts and, and higher education and what that does to, to, to the process. And I'm actually a believer of, of finding that middle ground because a lot of the, the pillars and structure from working in advertising is beneficial to me as an artist it, it hasn't it hasn't like um made me stagnant or, or squashed any any desire it's it's in that industry your job is to think of big ideas mm-hmm. <clears throat> and try to win them over and then produce them so you're you're in that industry you're usually just working with long shots mm-hmm. and i saw so many of them kind of like uh, make it to the end zone and uh, in terms of now how I operate as, as an independent artist, it's, I, ha- I have that same mentality. It's, it's dream big and uh, don't let you, the individual, be the no. There's going to be a lot of no's ahead of you. you you got to be, be the first yes. Mm-hmm. And as my friends at, at the city, at City Hall, always say, like, we just got to find a way to get to yes. So I think in an interesting plot twist, it was the structured realm of education and uh, advertising that taught me to dream big. Mm. I love that. Even so many ideas I've had as a curator um, or even in ways that the gallery came about, it wouldn't have happened if we heard no. And it wouldn't have happened if we um, kept the ideas small. Yeah. Like everything I always, I guess like, Pushing limits. It's funny. Often when people sign on to do a project with me and I tell them an idea, it's like they don't realize how far I'm going to try and take it. Right. And it, and I think that's there's a nice segue there to partnerships and collaborations. So if you are putting ideas forward to a potential collaborator and they can't grasp it or it's an immediate hard no, or Mm. then that might not just be the relationship that that's going to work for you. And if you work with someone that maybe they'll say, yo, that's crazy, but let's figure it out. Mm. Okay. And and then you start to, you know, within that project, you'll bring in people around you or you'll work with people around you or or seek out those types of people that are going to just make it happen. So, Mm. you know, it's, it's, I I can't help but wonder if through the artistic process, whether you went to OCAD, I didn't go to OCAD. I didn't, I didn't formally train. I I just, I wonder. And and I'm self-taught as well. Everything we've done has been. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very common. I hear that, that all the time. And and I always just wonder about the notion of goal setting as an artist. I, I think artists are so creative, heavy and, very imaginative and and uh, are are able to pull from places that others aren't. Um, but I think we we still have to remember how important it is to to set goals. And if you're going to do that, make them big. Make them big, very yeah. very big. And even yeah. if you fall short, as they say, like you're still going to accomplish you know something something grand. So mm-hmm. I try to try to work operate under that uh, little guideline. How important is collaboration in your work? I, I've seen some really cool collaborations you've done. Uh, it, it, well, collaboration is, and, and I've learned this because I've operated as a lone wolf 
for a long time. I, I'm an only child, so uh, I've been known to uh, throw a tennis ball against the wall for hours by myself and stay entertained. But collaboration, like I, le- I if you listen to like uh, podcasts or interviews from like the greats, whether it's like Kanye West or, or, or anybody, uh, they're going to mention collaboration. It always, always comes up. Mm-hmm. And I think what I used to think was, oh, that means I, I, I have to play nice and create a, a, a solid collaboration with another artist, which is true. Um, there's so much merit to that, and I'll get to that. But collaboration also comes in so many forms where it, are you working with a producer or an agent or a manager or a gallerist um, or, or just even a friend with ideas? Like, so you can't, you can, no one that's done anything great, um, I'm under the impression from people that have done great things, uh, has done it alone. Yeah. Um, now getting to actual physical collaboration, um, you know, it's, and I've been blessed to travel and, and when you collaborate, the thing that's going to happen most often is you're going to just learn something. Mm. If you put yourself out there and work with other artists, they're going to have techniques or ideas, um, that you, you'd never considered before. So you're just constantly adding to your toolkit. Mm -hmm. And you're sharing your toolkit. And so the the greater artist community is better for it. Um, I'm looking forward to collaborating more and more um, as things uh, progress in 2020 and and beyond. Like I I wouldn't consider myself to have done a ton of collaborations, but they've always been fun. That's for sure. Is there any that stand out to you that people could see as far as like murals? Um, I mean... We, uh, we, we, we both established, we live in the West End in Toronto. So Ness Lee and I had done, um, uh, a fun little piece and it's, it's small, but I, I, I love it. It's, it's like at Queen and Shaw. I was looking at it yesterday. Yeah. The little bit. And it's, it's, it's a little worse for it's, for the wear it's starting to crack a little bit, which is it got its, its own little nice character to it. But the thing about Ness Lee that I always appreciated was, uh, well, among many things about her practice, but how she commands colors mm-hmm. and how I, how I would command colors. And, and I hope that I'm continuing to uh, evolve with that, but she would, she would use a more of a muted palette. Um, and I, when I was working with her, I, I would just say, yo, like you pick the colors and just tell me what we're working with. And I love that because it, it gave me a fresh perspective on my own work. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's fun to take forward in my individual practice. So it, it's, uh, I'm really, uh, proud of that piece and, and very happy, um, to, to call Ness a friend and, and be able to bounce ideas off her. Mm-hmm. That was, I was so excited to see that for the first time. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, um, I always tell people it, it's a, it's an Easter egg hunt in the city and, and, you know, it's, it's still, it's still a bit of a, clandestine culture if you don't know street art or muralism uh, you you might not know the players but I see it all the time like some when someone's introduced to my work especially in Toronto where that's what's where the breadth of my work is is then they'll see my work if you see if you see my work once and recognize it twice then then you'll it's gonna pop up everywhere and it's kind of fun for me because then you know people that I meet for the first time the second time I see them, they're like, oh my God, that's your shit's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <It's> guilty. <laughs> what, um, what did creative expression look like when you were younger? Um, creative expression when I was younger was, uh, by way of athletics. Mm. I actually didn't, uh, I didn't participate in, in the art world until later, well past my teen years. And, and so I was, I was all athletics, everything growing up. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's interesting to break apart uh, sport. Like there's definitely an art, art to it, but I was just like, I loved high level competition and, and uh, I, it's in, like art was introduced to me uh, later, later on in life. So it's, I, I think about that often. It's, it's kind of a funny thing, uh, to think that I wasn't honing a craft when, when I was young, which mm-hmm. a lot of artists do. Um, but I, I've been, 
Uh, it, so it came through just graffiti culture. Like that was just something that I sort of, uh, by way of rap music and hip hop culture, uh, was introduced to graffiti, met some, some, uh, prolific guys, uh, uh, out West where I'm from. And then sort of in Toronto, Toronto was a, for in Canadian terms of a, a very, very, um, uh, like reputable might be a weird term for graffiti, but it's, it was a, a, a great city with a lot of graffiti incredible global um, level graffiti artists. So I just got pulled into the culture. I thought it was such a fascinating thing. And, and uh, you know, I've, I've seen it a million times when you're introduced to painting in the exterior, you're either most likely you'll be bored in two or three minutes mm. um, or you'll be captivated and pull up a lawn chair and watch someone paint for 10 hours. Um, and that's, that's a much more rare occurrence. But, uh, I, I was like that when I, when I met guys, um, that were painting, I would just post up and watch all day. And I loved it. It was just a matter of time before I, I had to try and suck, uh, for a really <laughs> long time. But, uh, those, uh, those were the bumps and bruises. How much of that, like initial, um, attempt at graffiti was out of a like desire to create versus a desire to like be wild and be out uh, yeah i mean it, it's uh that's a good question i, I always skewed towards creation mm -hmm. um but i was a wild guy mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was it was a, a merging a convergence um but you know i've i've seen most everything uh within that culture and, and and been a part of the the craziness and uh i always deep down kind of gravitated more towards sort of uh the creative aspect and and that's that i just slowly evolved in that direction it sounds like music is a pretty big influence yeah yeah music's a like i i talk about this often and i if, if I were to have jealousy issues, I kind of put musicians in a different category because I know that visual art moves people and is inspiring and all those things. But the way you see someone just pumping down the street, Queen Street, West, whatever, with their headphones in, like they've, they've taken on the soul of whatever artist they're listening to. You have breakups that affect you and a certain song affects you for decades. Like the, the what music does to people is, is fascinating to me. Like it's, uh, to me, it's almost on another level. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we could, we could point out that, you know, paintings uh, and, and visual art has survived thousands of years, which is absolutely remarkable and incredible. And it's always a, a blessing when you get to see a, 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 classic painting in a gallery around the world um but music there's music's there's something about it that that really resonates with 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 people mm -hmm. on another level so and and it does that for me just as not even as an artist but just as a as a person that <laughs> loves to throw the headphones in and crank it does like listening to music inspire a piece like I think it inspires a mood. Mm. Um, I don't, uh, nah, yeah, I would say it's for me, it inspires a mood more than anything. So it's just like I mentioned earlier that painting is, is my favorite thing to do. So you would pair that with your favorite sounds and, and tone and mood. So it's just really like, yeah, I've seen this often, like you'll see a, a painter uh, who's, who's painting a mural and they'll have their headphones in and I'm guilty as well. And they're just, they're basically dancing and painting and you get like, it looks like they're partying. Mm -hmm. um, and which is so interesting. Like a lot of my peers and a lot of the people I've met, especially if you're, if you're doing big murals, it, you're probably going to be working alone. Mm. It's, that's just, that's just kind of how it is. And, and I mean, studio artists as well, like you're, you're, it's you and the painting. And so it's, it's interesting. Like, it's like, you can self-reflect a lot. <laughs> you could 
you know, tune it, tune out the noise with music. You can listen to the noise. It's uh, so music definitely is, is uh, I view it as an uh, accoutrement to the process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Birdo, the name came from uh, a high school nickname. Where does the ideas um, for the like animals and mystic creatures where do those ideas come from um it's it's not a like thought about it often i don't have like a a, a streamlined answer other than it, it it really just evolved into it um I, I i you know i'd love to one day do like a flip book of of uh the progression of style from my scribbly shitty tags uh all the way to you know, my favorite piece uh, now. And there's, you can, de you could definitely see like a, a physical evolution. And so I used to work a lot with patterns and textures, even when I was sort of doing more pseudo letters or abstract letters. And, and really in terms of the, the animals, it, it's just, I love the, the idea of creating these surreal creatures. I mean, I was always inspired by, I've said this a million times, like Tim Burton. Um, and so you, you can see like the sandworm, if you know, if you get the reference, like I always loved the sandworm in, in Beetlejuice. And, and so it just, that was kind of always on my mind. Dr. Zeus, I always find like just the colors, patterns, and then creatures. It, it just kind of progressed that way. It was never intentional. Um, and then as soon as like birds was, birds was kind of the first thing that I felt really good about painting. And you tell me if this is a weird answer, I'm not sure, but I like to create whether it's a balance or a juxtaposition. So I use a lot of design elements, which are solid vectorized. And then, you know, I have my shading and, 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 uh, sort of shape and form. So you have that hard and kind of soft balance to my piece as a whole so what i've loved about birds is you got the feathers and the fluff and but then you get to render out a beak which is this hard edge and so of, of all the creatures it kind of the bird itself has that balance and and mm -hmm. so i mean i i start every piece if it's a bird with a beak mm -hmm. and i love it it's, it's I, I love it so much i actually don't like painting feathers i was speaking to an artist the other day about uh, painting hair and she, she's just like, Oh, tell me about it. So it's funny to, you look at these, these artworks from people that you, you idolize or, or respect and then to hear that they they go through the agony at times as well. It's very, it's fascinating. It's so true. Actually. Like I do portrait um, mm. and like the eyes, I could just do nothing but eyes and be happy yeah. and hair. It's like, yeah, I, I only do it really because it completes it, but I, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, and so I've in, in, so just jumping ahead a bit, but during COVID um, for me, I decided to, to do the things I've always wanted to do. I think there's been a few different, different uh, philosophies during this time. And I know a lot of artists are just like, ah, I'm at home all the time anyways. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not that big of a shift in lifestyle, but I've been working on the stuff that, that I've always wanted to do. So, so I've been messing around with portraits and mm -hmm. <laughs> you're exactly right. Like the hair is the last thing that I do. And I, it's just like, Oh man, like yeah. I have to do this because <laughs> this person has hair. Yeah. So, uh, it, you know, it, it's, the, the painting process is so fascinating because for the viewer, all they get is the final product. And with social media now, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, time-lapse clips and, and involvement in the process. But I think that people, what people miss out on is the emotional process and the times that like I go to bed and I'm just grumpy. And then the next night, just, you know, 24 hours later, I'm like giddy and it's like, it's, it's almost like a manic high. It's crazy. And if you have a partner who lives with an artist, we joke all the time that 
my wife needs a support group to deal with the roller coaster that is <laughs> is being with an artist. So, you know, that you, you, you want to get to a place where you're proud of the final piece and you want to showcase it and hope that people enjoy it. But <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's a party. Sometimes it's a war. And, and, you know. What is that process like for you when, because like I agree, but I have the luxury of painting at home completely by myself. I don't even let like the people around me look at the piece until it's done. I turn it or cover it, but you're doing stuff in public spaces. So how does it feel to like walk away from something that's unfinished and know that people are going to see it before it's perfected? Um, That's a really good question because I'm also uh, trained as a graphic designer and I, I'm like, I would never show process work. I would, st- mm-hmm. you know, like the, 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 even the notion of someone saying, can I see half baked work? I'm like, are you crazy? Mm-hmm. There's something about the exterior realm and th- like how I grew as an, as a, let's say mural artist was by doing hundreds of pieces that I could do in one day. And so that was never a contemplation. And I can remember the first sort of few times that I had to come back for a second day. And I, that came with a lot of animosity and, and was very peculiar. Um, and I suppose that just, I suppose that knowing, especially now that I painted some, some pieces that I'm very proud of and are quite big in, in stature or, or scale rather, uh, you kind of like, I know what the end goal is. And so it's, it, I kind of, I don't mind that the process work is there because for me, it's just getting from A to B. I know what B looks like and I, and these are just the steps. So especially when it's large, large scale, you really don't have time to consider what others are, are taking in because for example, if, I, if I'm on a 10 story building or whatever, and I come down and I look at it, I, I can't, I like, I got to figure out the components of the next section and think and, and go to sleep on that versus even worrying what, what anyone sees. Mm-hmm. But I do definitely have this, like it happens every time uh, where when I enter a new community and I'm painting a piece, like there's this, this wave and this tone from from the citizens where oftentimes they're like what is that what are you doing and i'm like yo just just wait just wait and and so i always try to i I mentioned i paint a beak first uh uh, if it's a bird but you get the eyeball in you get the beak in i I, i'll typically have said when i'm doing an abstract creature i'll usually get the head up first and that's you know that's the focal point you want that to be the 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 point that's the most special so i'll do that first as soon as I get that up, I always say like I, I win the community over and those same people that were passing by all of a sudden are like, oh, and I got now they're willing to offer you that patience to see it transform. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you, you, you take the good with the bad, like, yeah, it is, it's, it is kind of unnerving a bit that people are watching your work unfold, but I revel in like just being in a community I've never been in. And, and I told you uh, earlier that I'm quite curious. So it's fun as just like study, like sociological study to be on this corner painting. I'm always looking over my shoulder and just seeing like, what are these people up to? What's going on? How are they interacting? So I, I'll, t- I'll, I'll take that part of the process in exchange for the insecurities of uh, creating in, in front of, of someone. And I mean, like I, I have a piece that I'm working on in studio now and it's, like, I don't know if I would show people. I actually get, for, for my social media, I have a lot of friends in my circle that are like, yo, you're not active on social media. Like, you got to do the thing. You got to do the time lapse and all that. I'm like, oh, that goes against everything that, that, I'm, that I do. But I suppose I'm, I'm caught in a bit of an inconsistency right here, uh, live and direct, that <laughs> I, do it, I, I do it every time in the exterior realm. So maybe it's a philosophical thing. I feel like people really do like watching the process, especially like live um, in terms of watching a mural evolve. Um, but like, have you ever been to Art Battle? Have you done Art Battle? Uh, no. no, no, I, 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 I so 
No, I haven't done it. They're, they do that uh, just around the block. They used to do it at the uh, Great Hall, I think. Yeah, they still do. There's actually a mixed media one now, I think, mm-hmm. or they were doing it at Stacked Market where um, a lot of street artists were coming in because you could like bring your own spray paint and stuff finally. Oh, okay. Um, but it's cool because, I mean, it's only 20 minutes. You have 20 minutes to do a piece oh. and then everyone votes. But you're watching the whole process live and and like often – first few minutes you're just wondering like what the hell is that going to be and you can't see it Hmm. and the ones that you love initially um by the end that one that was weird in the beginning the last like two minutes they do something and you're like oh and like all of a sudden that's the one you're voting for but you couldn't see it what they could see until the end that's that's amazing yeah i've been i i've i've seen yeah i've seen similar things um yeah it's really cool and I, i mean maybe you can relate if you're doing portraits like even as you're critiquing your own work, I mean, hopefully you've done it enough times that you trust the process, but it's, it's not until uh, sometimes I'll, I'll get to the stage where I'm just putting the highlights on and I'm like, Oh, okay. Sick. Like, like all the way up until that last thing. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you would be in question. Um, there's this, there, I'm friends with a, a group and I've, I've, uh, very blessed to be friends with them and they're called, uh, secret walls. And uh, do you know them? Secret Walls? Yeah. So it's like art battle, but what they do is they everything's in done in black and white. Mm. Oftentimes it'll be one-on-one, but it, it'll be a team environment. So they'll have, uh, usually they'll showcase in a different city and they'll, they might have like a local team and then maybe a, a, a team that's that brought in. And so you have four artists on each side and it's a live battle on a big white backdrop and it's all done in, in grayscale or, or primary, but it's particularly black and white. And then the audience votes at the end. And so I have been reluctant to do live stuff. I'm, I, and, and I think a part of my growth is like doing the things that I'm uncomfortable with. And, and that's always a good way to push, but I just, I'm so calculated, you know, like I, again, it, it could be the graphic designer tendencies. Like I love being in, in my, my environment, controlling my <laughs> variables. Um, I don't like surprises when they, when they happen to me, I guess. So <laughs> what do you say? Um, just like going back to kind of how you got your start where you started with the tagging and, um, and then eventually your work has grown, but what do you say? to the person doing like random scribbly tags now? Cause you see a lot of like really bad graffiti. Um, and like, you know, my neighbor across the street, like their house, like their front porch got tagged and it's just like, mm-hmm. really like, you know, where does it start to kind of like, where do the lines blur between like vandalism and, an artist who's just starting out and only is capable of that, but will eventually grow into a fantastic street artist. Yeah, that's, I think that's a good and important point. Uh, it's, that's a, that's a, a great question and a difficult question for me to, to, to answer in that, you know, I come from the community. I've done things that maybe, <laughs> someone at some point was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and so I was there. And it's so what would I say to someone? Um, I'm not sure. I think, it, it, you know, and, and there's enough people that would argue that that tag on your neighbor's porch is art and is beautiful. Or there's enough people that would say, yo, that's, disgusting and ugly but important and we need this in in society and then there's the majority that would be like knock knock that shit off like what are you doing and so there for me like i i i like disruptivism i you know i i I like the rabble rousers in society i mean wifey and i were watching elon musk all morning this this morning and and you know you need though you need outliers and, and people outside of the box and my feelings about about graffiti is is just I do, I do think you need dissenters and and people that that have a different POV, but I just would hope that the it's it's about the message, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I quote the Marshall McLuhan 
quote all the time, like the, the medium is the message. So it's, it's just that if you, if you want to smash capitalism or, you know, to flip, flip the patriarchy there, I just don't know if writing, scribbling your nickname on someone's porch is the way to go about it. Yeah. Like, I, like I'm all for kind of like putting shit in people's faces and, and, and trying to, to shake things up. Um, I just, I, 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 am inspired nowadays by people and I, and I, I think graffiti is cool and, and has its place. I mean, it's, it definitely, you know, in the seventies, uh, eighties was a movement that is arguably going to be one of the biggest art movements of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, because you have street artists in every pocket of the globe at this, at this point in time with, mm -hmm. you know, so there's 7 billion people on earth and, and everyone has access to this. So like that, that was a big thing that happened. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of, it's, it's, it's left up to the person. Like at the end of the day, you as a person outside of being an artist, are you, are you a positive or are you a negative? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that's up for the individual to, to kind of wrestle with. And, you know, maybe there was a section of time where I was a, a negative, uh, you know what I mean? And it's hopefully, I, I think, I think the world's going to be a better place if more of us are positives, I, yeah. I guess. Is there a part of the world that's inspiring you right now as far as street art goes? Is there like a Ooh. scene that... Oh, that's a good question. Jeez, like <laughs> the one thing that I was getting a bit burned out from travel <clears throat> last year and the year before and, and always grateful, but, but sort of like, I finally started to understand like there's that whole like <clears throat> the, the idea of being a famous rock star, you know, how cool would that be? But the grind of the road and the touring, like it's not glamorous like people think. And so I was kind of getting to a place where I was just like road weary. And during uh, the last two months uh, in, in Toronto, like almost every day, wifey and I look at each other like, Oh God, we miss travel. Like, uh, you know, and I mean that, that goes to show how fortunate we are in our lives that that's our concern. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, you know, we hope for the, the safety of everybody and our friends and family, but I, man, like just traveling as one of my favorite things to do. And, and you go to sort of places and, you know, I was set to go to Russia this year, mm -hmm. um, and, and was really stoked about that. So in terms of like what inspires me there, it's Toronto is like a, just the infrastructure of it is you can't really go big the way you can in, in say Europe. I mean, Russia is a great example. I know there's a couple of organizations like you could paint 20 story buildings. Uh, and that's common in, in a lot of like Eastern European countries. Um, so I, I like a part of it is maybe just my addiction to it all, or just that's what excites me. But I love how big people get to go in, in, in other parts of the world. That's, that's, that, that really inspires me. There's a guy in, um, his name's Kit Bennett. And I'd have to, for some reason, it strikes me that he's from Australia, but uh, don't quote me on that, but he's, he's doing these, uh, where you look the, the view of the pieces from the sky. So he's painting on grant roads and yeah. tops of buildings. And so he's, he's a, specific individual that I'm, I'm, he keeps coming out with, uh, home runs and it's, it's quite inspiring. And it's just like a different way to look at, at the artwork. I think is quite cool. There's other, there's a lot of other artists that have been doing that, but his stuff uh, of recent has been very, very, very nice to look at. It's so cool to just like look outside and that really like every surface could be your canvas. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of like, my graffiti roots like you we we you just go out and you look for spots and you're just like imagine yourself on that, that spot and that's something that never left me and that sort of evolved into you know we we live in the same neighborhood and and i've lived in that neighborhood for a long time so that kind of becomes that was my hub and you you 
I've expanded from there. So there was a, a, a phase of, of my career in the last five years that it was about quantity. I just wanted to paint everything and anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're exactly right. Like it's, I mean, what's, what's fascinating about public art is we're bombarded with visual communication. Mm -hmm. There's, there's signs and bleeps and bloops and, and adverts and, and like, there's just stuff to look at everywhere. Um, and I, you know, like, I guess something that I wrestle with, like, maybe on an existential level is like, who's to say that sometimes public art isn't just adding to that clutter? Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I always hear people say, well, it's better than a gray wall, which that's my opinion. But I wonder if I like how many people out there are like, God, the gray wall was, you know, a lot, you know, my, my preference. It's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to think about. <laughs> um, how much of what you do is like commission based? Uh, most. Yeah. Most of all. I mean, I, I've, I've got a strategy and it, it's, it's in my earlier years when I was trying to make a name for myself, as I mentioned, it was quantity and, and sort of get, my portfolio to a level where I could uh, make a living. Mm -hmm. And now that my portfolio is in a place where I can pitch clients or, or sort of uh, win, win bids. I think I'm a bit more careful with quantity because I mean, I, I, I look back at, at some stuff from five years ago and I shudder I'm like, Oh God, that's still in the public realm. Like I should, I should do something with that because a part of my learning process happened in the, in the public realm. And I'm a better artist now than I was five years ago. And I can almost guarantee I'll be a better artist five years from now. Just, uh, so it's, it's, I'm, I've, I've pivoted to a more strategic, like, less pieces but bigger scale longer lead times more like production involved to make them happen and that's sort of that's what thrills me you know like what used to thrill me was just something every every weekend or every few days and now i have the patience to wait four months six months a year for that super super special thing to happen so if you're waiting a year uh to materialize a, a a, a piece of artwork you're definitely going to lay it on like it's gonna you you want it to be the best thing that you can possibly create with with that one moment mm. so that's 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 where i've evolved to how do you balance like making a client happy and claiming your artistic license uh that's a good question that's an important question like for all artists of all time uh i think you know, a lot of that work was done early on when my ratio to your earlier question was, you know, like 0% paid gigs, 100%, like defining your style and becoming who you are as an artist is so important. And when you, when you feel like you've, you're in your little place in this giant cosmos of, of artists, uh, I hope it's fair to say like you kind of earned that. So in terms of client work, like if I'm approached, the presumption is that we know the realm I'm going to be working in. Mm -hmm. So cool. Check. Um, but going back to my experience with advertising, like I get it. Like you, commercial art is different than art. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's what a lot of people wrestle with and, I think that's sometimes what sort of like separates well, well how you react to commercial art versus art is, is, is a great separator. Mm -hmm. And I, because of my advertising experience, understand revisions and options. And so I'm only going to produce what I'm happy with. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I'm going to be happy with it. Is it possible that I was happier with another option or with a prior iteration? Yes. Um, so I think that's kind of a 
semi cryptic way of answering your question that I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I would never put anything forward to a client that I'm, I'm embarrassed to produce, but I'm willing at this stage in my life and career to like understand that this is commercial art. So there has to be a balance. And as I already mentioned, like you want to work with people that want to partner with you. Mm-hmm. No, 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 you don't. I don't want to dictate to anyone and no one, I don't want anyone dictating to me. I want to understand that we're both uh, flexible. Mm-hmm. Your like work is surreal and colorful. Your mask is so playful. Um, yet you obviously do take everything very seriously. Like how do you um, like weave those two seemingly opposite things together? I mean, maybe it's to my earlier point that I'm just like a junkie for juxtaposition. So it's, it, it, you're exactly right. Like <laughs> I, I've, I'm, I'm like the fun crusher. I'm known as being the, the fun killer when it comes to artistic practice. Like when I used to hang out with my graffiti buddies a lot, like I was just like, people do art for fun. Mm-hmm. That's the point. And I, I'm not, I'm serious. I was like, this is serious business. So I think the the aesthetic is is playful and approachable and and uh, maybe it, maybe that's just the, the 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 yin and the yang of it all. It's it's that I'm able to create this outward appearance uh, that's very light and and you know in my own realm it's it's very heavy. So mm-hmm. may, maybe then maybe the next exploration will just be like bringing them you know, maybe I'll get a bit heavier in content matter and I'll lighten up on myself a little bit and see, (laughs) see what happens to the art there. Does your like background in advertising make the business side of art easier or is it still something that you do because you have to do, but would like nothing to do with? Uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely like to have nothing to do with. Eh, I mean, it, it's a, it's a hybrid of, of the things you said, like it definitely, my, my background in advertising has made it easier because I've got tactics and techniques, uh, from that industry that I can, uh, apply. Mm -hmm. Um, also it's helped me mentally with just the understanding and, and and you're exactly right. Like you just, uh, if if you're an artist at a certain point, you're just going to accept it or not. And, uh, so it's definitely, I, I've definitely accepted it. Um, and yeah, I, it, it annoys me and I'd rather just like do all the crazy stuff that I, that I want to do. But I think a part of creating art is problem solving anyway. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you look at a white empty canvas, someone that's not trained or, or just hasn't done it before would look at that and be like, I don't know, like, how would I, what would I do with this? And so when you're trained or, or have, have experience, you're, you're just piecing together the puzzle. Mm-hmm. And so what I've tried to do is keep that philosophy with regards to the business and, and just think of it as like, you know, in order for me to, reach this goal, whether it's a financial goal or an accomplishment goal or, or what have you. Okay. Well, this is my white canvas. What do I got to do to create the layers and, and, and make the mixes to get me to the the, the piece that, that I'm uh, happy with at the end. Mm -hmm. And Um, I hear you like talking about, you know, being in a place now where you can, um, you know, be selective about the pieces, the commission work that you're taking. Um, like how much work did you do for free in the beginning? And do you think that artists should be doing work for free in the beginning? Um, it's funny because there was always this like general understand, unsaid understanding when I was a junior in, in, advertising which is a creative field where all the ogs or the seniors what we, you know like they're just like come on kid like i did it you do it you know what i mean 
just this. And, and so you didn't have this, like, I always see this sort of like sentiment, uh, I guess, online of artists and that, that debate about like doing free work or whatever. But in the corporate world, like you complain about it, sure. But you know that that's just the reality Mm -hmm. and it's called portfolio building. Mm -hmm. And when you're a student at college, you're building your portfolio and then you take it to some agencies and they all take a shit on it. And then you adjust it and try to make it better. And then maybe you get an internship and then you make it better in that internship. I guess now they pay for internships, which is cool. Um, But it's just process. And so I did, everything was free. I did, I did so much free stuff. And I used to, I used to get kind of like questioned by my peers at the time where they're like, you know, you you could, you should at least quote this much, but I was, my philosophy was in alignment with, or I guess my trajectory was in alignment with my corporate career where I was like, yeah, I mean, like I'm all right, but I'm still a junior. So instead of me negotiating five hundred dollars for a garage or whatever and then they're gonna if, as soon as they become a paying client they're gonna say okay well i my name is sal and i want you to put sal's garage on the on it and they're like uh but i kind of had this idea of like a surreal like creature that ha- you know had tentacles and so you gotta you gotta understand that there's that balance there and, and what's interesting is like when i was working full time that that was my i was that was my career and so the art was just bonus and, and there was no pressure to make rent and, and live your life off the artwork. So there was a bit, there's a bit of a freedom to that. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, I get it. Like the, the, there's very few other industries and, and this is a part of that conversation online that you would get a plumber to come over and be like, Oh, you know, like, could you just, you know, I just do that for free. Like there's, there's no industry where that's acceptable. So that part of it to answer your question. Yeah, of course. Like if, if you're good and qualified, if you, if you have a qualified skill that somebody else can't just do on their own, you should be compensated for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I get, maybe I'm old school. I don't know. Like, I think there is a place for building your portfolio organically and almost like putting in your time, I guess, uh, to get to a place where you become qualified. Mm-hmm. I, I, for me, <clears throat> I read a, I read a magazine, I guess I was in college at the time and there's this, uh, artist and to me, it looks like it's spelled Arise, A-R-Y-Z, but it, he, I think he's from Spain or, or somewhere, so it could be Ariz. Mm-hmm. He, he paints like huge, super, super, super accomplished muralist. And, and I always look to him and, you know, as a young artist, you got to identify like, who are some people that you emulate, you can emulate, and maybe what was their path and like, what did they do to get there? And so this artist in, in the article, he, he was like, man, like, young people all the time are coming to me. They're like, how do I paint a big building? I want to paint a paint big building. And, and his response was, you got to paint some, you got to paint small stuff. You got to paint small stuff. Well, <laughs> before you can paint something big. Well, and it's interesting. Like now I kind of find myself scaling up and I'm starting to hear whispers from younger artists about just like, Oh, like what do I got to do to paint the big thing? And I'm like, Oh shit. Like <laughs> what he, what he said. And, and that's exactly true. Like you can't, can't just go from zero to a hundred. Like that's, I, I'll tell you this, like, I'm glad that seven years ago when I wanted to paint a 10 story building, I wasn't given that opportunity. <laughs> very, very glad. So I, I think, I think again, I, maybe I've been semi-diplomatic, like it's a balance. I, I do think obviously qualified artists should, should, be compensated like every field on the planet. Um, But I also think, you know, I mean, I guess in other fields, there's apprenticeships, you know, there's internships. So I I think there is a place to find your voice, hone your skills um, and, and, and get to a place where you can assert your value. Mm -hmm. I think like exposure really is so important too. Like, seeing your work everywhere makes it become where someone's like, I need that on my house. I need that on the side of our building or. I mean, it's even like 
let's like uh, Basquiat, you know, one, one of the m- most famous artists. And, and I was blessed to see his exhibit at eight. Did you see it at AGO or have you seen it? I didn't. No, oh, yeah, it was, uh, I, I've been a kind of a lukewarm fan of, of Basquiat um, until I saw the exhibit. And I, I just like, I couldn't believe his usage of color was I, I always kind of viewed his work as being super random and and I I've, I'm now a, a huge fan but you know like there's so many artistic legacies out there especially if it's in the street art or mural world where the story starts with people just getting out there and doing it mm. like that's like that's actually I think the most common story and then they were doing it for reasons like I, I don't think there's many artists out there, street artists that if you said, all right, when you started, what was your objective? And they, and they, and they would say like, <clears throat> I, I wanted to be like Damien Hurst, you know, or, or like a super famous, rich artist. Like I, I think mostly the answer would be like, ah, I was just fucking around. Like I just was, was hitting it. So, I mean, that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, if you had to turn me into a character, <laughs> what would it be? Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting considering uh, I'm also working on portraits now. What would you be as a character? Do you want to be? Do you want to be the uh, squirrel from the park? Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I could go with that. <laughs> um. Toronto is oozing with talented artists. Um, what would you say to young artists or artists of any age, but emerging artists who are trying to set themselves apart from the crowd? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I think just remember that, like, I don't think the, the easy root or easy answer is going to be the answer um you might be a a, a genius or or a, a phenom and I, I i i would love that i want to meet you if you're a young young phenom but you kind of gotta just like keep keep cracking and and like I, I I've been learning about this about artists that I've been looking up to. They sort of like reveal their revisions and their the the process that they've gone through. And I think I've been caught off guard where I'm like, what? Like this guy has to do revisions? Like, look at his body of work. So it's just a career of constant revisions. And that's kind of something that we have to uh that's that's one of the cons potentially and and revisions can you can use it to be less of a con and and understand that it's just there to make better work but that is to say for a young artist if you want to stand out like i'm I'm sure in 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 art school they, they taught you the term like kill your darlings like just remember like the first idea might not be the best idea and and continue to explore and i think that when you either evolve to or stumble upon that really fantastic idea, I think you're going to know it. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're wondering, if you kind of feel uneasy about it, or maybe you're looking at someone else who's established and you're like, am I a bit too close in style? Like you probably, I would imagine are. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that you got to go with your gut and just keep playing. And, and remember like, it's a fun stage. Like I know it's sort of like, it could be frustrating trying to find your voice, but you're also not locked into your voice. So like embrace that That's that's really magical. Cause a lot of us, you know, I always say that I went from the corporate industry. I, at any given time I was working on 10 brands. Mm. Um, and now I work on one. And so that's a, a, a nice way to put, to say that like, yeah, it's great. It's my art practice, but I mean, it's still, it's like brand work. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a young artist and you're just in that exploratory phase or you're, you got, you've got a white canvas in front of you. So that's, that's a magical time as well. So be sure to have fun uh, 
finding that voice. Mm -hmm. Where can people, um, or like, what can people expect from you next? Ooh, uh, I'm, I'm that. So I've, I've got, uh, wonderful, wonderful, um, mentors in the, in the field of entrepreneurship. So I'm actually really considering, well, actually it's beyond considering, but more entrepreneurial moves and, and connected to, to the artwork, but also not connected. Um, I'm, I'm definitely branching out in, in, as we talked about earlier, different, uh, mediums within the creative fields. Uh, so whether that's, uh, film, television, music, uh, animation, I'm, I'm leaving it a bit vague because artists love the element of surprise, <laughs> but you know, I've, I've definitely in the pipeline got more basketball courts. I'm going to paint and uh, some cool, like rooftop things and, and some, you know, I definitely want to bring a couple activations to Toronto that might not have been done in that way. Um, but ultimately what's really driving me, especially during COVID when I think we've, we've had so much time to reflect, uh, and, and it's, it's an opportunity to, 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 to face yourself and say, okay, this is you. Mm-hmm. Um, we've all been sort of stripped of our kind of like the, the, the avatars as Elon Musk would, would potentially put it. So you're really just left with you and, and your desires and what, what is it you really want? And, and so uh, I'm definitely excited to do a few of those things that are, are from left field that might not even be artistic and endeavors, but entrepreneurial ones or di- different, um, mediums. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's good because you as an artist, you, as you know, like inspiration is so key. If you ever find yourself as an artist kind of being like, Oh God, I got to got to get this in by, you know, 7 a.m. tomorrow. It's like, that's, that's the reality. That's life, especially as a commercial artist. But when you're just pumping and you wake up at 5 a.m. without an alarm, you're like, oh, you know, that thing's been waiting for me while I've been sleeping. What a, well, that sucked that I had to sleep. So <laughs> you want, you, you always want to be sure that you're continuing to have those uh, bursts of uh, inspiration uh, in, in your art practice. And, and, uh, right now what's, what's really driving me are, are some of these like eccentric, uh, ones on the side that are in a different realm. I love it too, because like when you start to branch out and do those different things, that's going to inspire you in ways that you haven't been inspired before. And like, who knows what that will do for your art? Ab- absolutely. Uh, you gotta, you gotta like, you gotta, you gotta s- s- switch things up and it's, we, we definitely, you know, to, again, find your voice, find your place. You, you have to establish yourself and your look. Um, but all the greats, you know, all the greats throughout history of, you know, have their eras mm. and, uh, it, you, you, you might, for me, I'm excited to continue pushing the scale and, and hopefully grandiose, at least in my mind, nature of some of my, my projects and installations, but it's, it's to the point where I'm, I'm getting very curious at, at what else I can, uh, uh, accomplish. Uh, so it's a good time. I'm, I'm stoked. I'm really stoked. Where can people find you? Uh, in, in no one can find me. I'm very, <laughs> on, very el- elusive. Uh, on social media. And- on social media. So yeah. it's, uh, I, the little factoid, like classic Instagram uh, story. So I, would, I, I wish I had the handle Birdo, which is my, my artist uh, nickname, but it's one of those ones where I think it's a, a lady in 2010 got the account and has like, it's like one of those accounts where she posted one thing and it's just gone. It's like 2010 or it's like, ah, you know, I, I would use that. Have you um, asked her for it? Uh, yeah, I think I've slid into the DM. Yeah. Uh, I, I tried to, to save face. I think I did it once. And I was like, all right, I was just, don't be desperate here, dude. But, uh, <laughs> so on social media, it's Jerry rug, J E R R Y R U G G. Awesome. Yeah. That was a good conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me.
Okay, well, that was our podcast. Thanks so much, Birdo, for joining us. I just love speaking with self-taught artists who came into their craft later in life. It just shows us uh, what can happen when we step out of our box and try new things. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow and hit subscribe so you can get all of the amazing content we have coming up for you. 